It is indeed a great privilege to be able to um, speak to this uh, very honorable forum today, and I'm grateful for the conveners of this uh, important conference. Um, it is particularly um, appropriate to speak on this topic after uh, Zvichas Kelly's um, uh, shaking um, clips and the whole uh, talk. And um, I feel that it is uh, indeed a very um, uh, significant um, uh, perspective that uh, I can bring here to this uh, topic of uh, religion, human rights, um, the interplay, interaction, what's going on in the Middle East, where Israel fits within all this. Um, and I shall start with talking about the Israeli case, which is what I am uh, most um, um, uh, ex my expertise focuses on on what's going on here at home, um, but then I will tie it together to the overall um, uh, scenario um, based on my experience uh, sitting on the CEDA committee uh, for almost um, uh, for six years now, a um, little more than six years. And uh, I prepared something, but then I changed it because I decided that I first want to start um, on a very personal um, basis to tell you um, how my day yesterday went on uh, on my uh, on the professional front because it really um, gives a, a, a very uh, inclusive uh, picture of our struggle here. Um, uh, by our, I mean women's struggle here in Israel. Um, as um, you heard, I'm the founding director of the Rackman Center for the Advancement of the Status of Women here in Israel. Um, so, yesterday morning, we were at the parliament sitting in the committee on legislation which prepared the bill to ensure that there are at least four women on the committee that selects the um, rabbinical judges for the rabbinical courts. That bill which was put, initiated uh, by three women legislators, was actually prepared and initiated by us at the uh, Rackman Center here at bar -Ilan University. And yesterday, the day that started early in that legislation committee and ended at 4 a.m. this morning, and that's why I'm a bit tired today, um, was successfully passed and culminated a work of almost two years on this specific piece of legislation. But I just ask you to bear in mind, the great achievement is that there are going to be at least four women on an 11 members committee that selects the rabbinical judges that are sitting on the rabbinical courts and have exclusive jurisdiction to decide on issues of marriage and divorce and other affiliated matters in these cases between Jews. Are there any women judges in these courts? Of course not. So the great achievement is that women will take part in selecting and appointing, appointing those judges. From the parliament, we went straight on to the High Court of Justice, where we had an appeal that um, asks, I will not go into the very details of the matter, but that asks that, the, um, that Minister Bennett, who is um, in charge of uh, religious affairs in Israel, will not appoint the 10 um, uh, public representators for the uh, body, for the convention that appoints the chief rabbis, so that the other bill that is planned to enhance, to enlarge the uh, scope of this uh, convention will be able to pass all the legislative uh, process that bill is designed so that there will be at least 20% of women participating in the convention that appoints, that selects and appoints the chief rabbis. How many people are currently on that uh, convention, on that committee? 150. How many of them are women? One. What is the origin of this convention? It originates almost 100 years ago, in 1920, when there was a huge battle here in pre-state um, 
Palestine or pre-state Israel. Um, between the um, uh, old uh, Jewish establishment and the newcomers, that Zionist newcomers, and the old ultra-Orthodox um, uh, Jewish establishment here objected to any of the novel ideas, including those of gender equality, and objected even the mere right of women to vote. And this uh, body is the legacy of that battle from almost 100 years ago, and we are still fighting this. And once again, is there any possibility that women, under the current construction of religious and religion and state in Israel, that women will serve as rabbis, not to talk about chief rabbis? Of course, there is no such possibility currently. So the, the battle now is to have women on that committee. And as I speak just now, we have our lawyers from the Rackman Center arguing a case in front of the Grand Rabbinical Court in Jerusalem. That case involves a woman who is, in our terms in Hebrew, aguna, meaning a chained woman, meaning a woman who cannot receive her bill of divorce from her spouse because her spouse refuses to do that. She is chained for 13 years now. And in her case, the circumstances were so extreme that the rabbinical court did use its powers, which it only seldom uses, sadly, but it did use its powers to have the man, after the man fled and ran away, he was found, and he was arrested by the rabbinical court so as to force him to grant her the bill of divorce, the get. He still refused to do so. And four months ago, in a hearing at the Grand Rabbinical Court, he jumped out of the second floor window, ran away, never to be found again. And we are now arguing on religious grounds, on halachic, religious legal grounds, we are arguing at the Grand Rabbinical Courts that there are ways within religious law to free this woman, even if the husband is not found, even if he does not grant her the bill of divorce. And I emphasize this very last point. There are grounds within the Jewish law, within the halacha, within the religious tradition. And this is really my main point in trying to tie all the uh, perspectives together. In my six years sitting on the CEDO uh, committee, um, this experience enables, uh, which involves three times a year, um, uh, three week session, uh, now only in Geneva, uh, hearing every time at least um, reports from eight to 10 countries each session, and those countries reporting to us on um, uh, whatever transpired within the last three, four, or five years in their country in terms of. Uh, implement, implementing their international obligations to advance women and to eliminate um, uh, gender discrimination in those uh, countries. This, this gives me, or this gave me, a very comprehensive perspective of women's status, women's position um, all over the world including developed countries, including developing countries, the global north, the global south, everything, more than 100 countries we've already heard during this um, uh, six years that I served on the, um, on the committee. Um, and uh, uh, perhaps the strongest experience that um, I um, uh, experience is the similarity between our work here as women fighting religious extremism fighting religious fundamentalism, fighting patriarchy, which is really very sadly, very often based on religious perspectives and religious norms and religious law. The similarity between what we experience here and what women in Arab world, in Muslim countries, in African countries experience. They experience the same confrontation, the same battle, 
And the strategies are very often also very similar. And I want to emphasize here and say it with um, um, deep uh, regret, because I myself come from religious background and I consider myself to be a committed and an observant Jew according to my own understanding of religion. And I do not want to fight religion. I want to fight those who currently have the power to tell us what religion says. Those who currently have the power to decide for everybody else what religious law is and what religion demands. And like we saw in Tzvi Kelly's um, um, short clip, the words about Sharia will rule who decides what Sharia is? Who decides what Sharia says? Sharia is an extremely vague notion. And currently, those who have the power, who are um, all men who have the power to decide what's in Sharia, they abuse this power and they abuse this um, uh, uh, control over the interpretation and over the implementation. And going back to the um, situation in Israel, again, I say sadly that in this um, area of religious control over marriage and divorce, and also over some related matters to marriage and divorce, we cannot say honestly that Israel is a democracy. In this respect, Israel is not a democratic country because of the inherent, because of the blatant, because of the um, institutional gender discrimination that is built in into the current construction of religious control over marriage and divorce and the impossibility of civil marriages and civil divorces in Israel. And in this respect, we are much more similar to the neighboring countries in this part of the world than to the countries in the developed world which we consider ourselves to be part of. And this again brings me back to the shared experiences of women in this region and in other parts of the world who experience the same phenomena which in legal terms we call um, the personal status regime or legal pluralism, namely the existence of a number of legal systems in the same country over the same people and the exclusive control and very often the state enforced control of religious law in the very sensitive and uh, personal areas of family law. Personal status means family law and all related uh, matters to family law. And there are dozens of countries that are still under this uh, regime. Israel is being part of them. And again, as I said before, the strongest experience is the similarities between the tactics and the strategies that we women are trying to uh, employ and trying to make use in our fight to change this um, system of legal pluralism and to enable the choice and to um, uh, achieve a situation where people all over the world will have the choice between civil law and religious law and within religious law to be able to have the religious laws develop and change in the direction of respecting human rights and respecting by saying respecting human rights, I mean respecting human rights according to the United Nations Declaration, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and according to the United Nations System of Human Rights Convention, CEDA being only one of them, the ICCPR, the economic and social rights, the children's rights, you all know all the 10 maybe upcoming 11 um, uh, human rights uh, conventions. This is the system to which so many countries have theoretically adopted. Unfortunately, very few of them really adhere to all the 
um, uh, inclusive set of human rights. But this is what we should aspire to. And the human rights treaty bodies, the committees that oversee the implementation of these uh, conventions are the key to uh, achieve a universal a universal implementation of the Human Rights Convention. It is an uphill struggle. It is an uphill battle. And women are key players in this battle because as we saw and as I tell you, the experience shows is that women are the victims of the abuse of human rights and the abuse of Sharia and the abuse of religious uh, law. For women, it is definitely not an Arab Spring. And by the way, the term that I understood is the politically correct term in the UN to use is countries in transition. And when saying countries in transition, we really do not know what the direction of the transition is going to be. So women currently are not enjoying any of these um, developments any of these developments. And um, uh, as I say, women are the key players to um, have the change and have the transition go in the right direction. And personally, again, going to my own personal experience, I truly wish that we will have the possibility to cooperate with such organizations, maybe some of you know, as the Musawa, who are the um, uh, Muslim feminists who show um, that there are so many venues within Sharia, within Muslim law, to develop in the direction of gender equality. And when I read texts and when I speak to my friends in Musawa, unfortunately, I cannot meet them here in Israel. Obviously, I cannot meet them in their own countries. But we can meet in Geneva. And when I meet them in Geneva and I talk to them and I hear what they write, I could just change the words between uh, Jewish law or halacha and Sharia and the text would be so similar. It is just striking. Um, and I really believe that the potential is there and I truly hope that we will be able to develop this potential and um, work together to advance the status of women and to really bring uh, the whole world into a much, much better place. Thank you.